Hey guys, JCC2224 here reviewing the Transformers Generations War for Cybertron Deluxe Class Bumblebee and Cliff Jumper. They're the same mold, so why not? Uh, these guys are actually really, really great figures to a really, really great game. I absolutely love the game, and these toys really just show not only how great the game is, but also how great the game designs are and how great the toys are. Now, the War for Cybertron figures from the 2010 Generations line were really great. From the 2012 Generations line, the uh, Fall of Cybertron figures were... Let's just say they weren't all that great. Um, but these guys are absolutely fantastic. First off, we're going to look at Bumblebee here. I'm going to go over all the details and features of Bumblebee here, and then we're going to look at the articulation on Cliffjumper, and then finally a comparison of the two. And then after that, obviously, the transformation, you know, vehicle modes, da 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 da, da. Um, <laughs> Now, this guy is actually really, really awesome. I absolutely love this guy. He has such a great design in the game, and it really translates well to the toy. The chest looks absolutely wonderful, really evokes Bumblebee. The head is really G1 Bumblebee. That just screams, hey, I'm G1 Bumblebee. Absolutely love the head sculpt. It's probably... The best Bumblebee head sculpt I think we've ever gotten. Absolutely love it. Now, his arms, I really love the aesthetic of his arms. Not only does he kind of have this blocky look here, but he also has this really sleek wheel on his uh, forearm there. Just absolutely wonderful. He even has his wheels inside his leg there, just like they had in the game. And sometimes in G1, they actually had this. Just overall, really, really great look. Unfortunately, he does have a bit of a backpack, but it is nothing major whatsoever. But overall, I absolutely just love this guy. Translucency all over, just Energon streams. I'm not sure if that's an Energon thing there, or maybe just his light. But his eyes are painted bright blue just to evoke the Energon. Uh, he has light piping. He had light piping underneath those blue eyes, but they just painted it blue for some reason. Cliff Jumper, I think, still has light piping, and if I can show it, I will show the light piping on Cliff Jumper, but all over, it's such a great looking figure. Absolutely love it. Now, features on this guy he has a removable gun here, so just flip this up, and you can see a gun, and you tab it, and it can go in his hand like so. Now, this gun, to my knowledge, was not in the game. The main weapon that Bumblebee has is the Energon Blaster Pistol. And this looks nothing like that weapon whatsoever. It's just, I guess, a little Bumblebee-looking gun that kind of fits Bumblebee. I don't know, it looks cool, but I kind of wish that it had a more game-accurate gun. Because I absolutely love the guns in the game. If you want to know, my favorite guns in the game are the Neutron Assault Rifle, the Scrap Maker, and the Null Ray. So, um... <laughs> Yeah, like I said, absolutely love the game. I just keep playing it and playing it. Um, unfortunately, these just do. They don't really tab in. They just kind of rest there. So if you do do that, you'll have weird puncher things on him. <laughs> now, overall, I just absolutely love the look of this. And I don't know why my laugh is so weird sometimes. It's like, <laughs> Okay, I'm going to stop doing that. I'm probably going to freak you out. Um, now... I really just love the blades, how they just flip out. It does it on both arms, and I absolutely love it. It's on a really nice ratchet joint, and overall it's just really, really nice. Now, a comparison with Cliff Jumper here, you can see that uh, they took away some paint apps on Cliff Jumper, yet they added some. You can see on the chest there, Cliff Jumper does not have that uh, black bit, but Bumblebee does. On the legs here, you can see Cliff Jumper has more silver, while Bumblebee does not have as much. <laughs> and on the back here, you can see how Bumblebee has this patch of yellow right here, while Cliff Jumper is just black. So sometimes they just took the intricacy of the paint applications and just kind of got rid of it. But overall, I am pretty happy that they did sell both. So that's Bumblebee for you. Now for Cliff Jumper. Uh, I have Cliff Jumper deployed with the two blades here, so you can just kind of see them out. Now, the articulation on this mold is a ball-jointed neck. I guess you can say it has a hinge, even though it's just for transformation. It has a ball-jointed shoulder, swivel at the bicep, dual-hinged elbow, um, 
kind of like a bulge one at the wrist, even though it just really serves as a swivel. It's a swivel to waist, even though it does get hindered by his back kibble. He has hinge, a swivel and a hinge at the leg there. I guess you can say he has this weird joint here, but that's just for transformation. He has a swivel above the knee and a hinge at the knee. And he has, I guess you can say, ball jointed feet, but that's just for transformation. Uh, my Bumblebee's feet are actually kind of loose. As you can see, they're just kind of floppy. While my Cliff Jumper is just really tight. So, I don't really know what, um, why it is. Maybe my Bumblebee's worn. I got them both uh, loose uh, in the same lot. But maybe the previous seller just wore out my Bumblebee's feet. Maybe it's just a mold thing. I don't know. So the transformation on Bumblebee. I'm going to show it on Bumblebee. And then I'm going to uh, jump cut to both of them transformed. Uh, oh, before I do that, I just kind of want to show you um, the quality between the War for Cybertron figures and the Fall of Cybertron figures. You can see a lot smaller on the, on the Fall of Cybertron figures. Not as much whatsoever. Just kind of floppy, not really all that great. Just, I mean, paint wear just from transforming it. Just overall, the quality really did go down. Which, for Star Wars people, Star Wars wasn't the only thing affected in 2012. Um, so, the transformation on this guy. I want to rotate the head. Use that hinge, hinge it down, and then just totally rotate it. There you go. And then the next thing you want to do is take these little bits on the leg and just clip them out, fully rotate them, and just do it like that. And just have the feet rested like such. Second verse, same as the first. There you go. And then this starts getting a bit complicated. What you want to do with this back kibble, you can see this little slider thing. You want to just take it and you want to slide it back, which this is kind of difficult. So just slide it back and then just totally hinge it. And then you separate these bits. And every now and again this just, um, comes unpegged by itself, but what you want to do, this little bit here, you just want to unpeg it so it has more motion on the back kibble. And then... Oh, I bumped the camera. <laughs> and then you just want to make sure that these bits are above the hinges there. And then you can see it's starting to form a bit more like the back of the vehicle. Now what you want to do, just kind of have this up and out of the way. And you want to take the shoulders, hinge them back. You want to take the bicep here. And you want to rotate it like such. Exactly like such. You want to take the joint and just rotate it. And you can see the little tab here that'll tab into the shoulder. Every now and again, this is tricky to do. You kind of got to angle it. Now, I'm just going to do a jump cut with both of the arms transformed like this because I know this is going to take me a bit. Okay, now I got both of the shoulders tabbed into the forearm there. And then what you want to do, you want to take these bits on the arm and hinge it up. And you can see a little tab, a little slot self-explanatory. Just do that. And then, what you want to do, just make sure those bits are still tabbed in. All of them. You really got to make sure everything's still tabbed in while you're doing this. And then you can see a little tab here. Just kind of tab it into the arm. And there you go. Now you can see it's just about a full vehicle except for the back wheels. And that's what these are going to be. So you want to make sure that the uh, wheel here is extended outward. And then you push the yellow of the leg up into the gray of the leg. And it kind of clips in on this tab here. So just want to take that out. Second verse, same as the first. I'm sounding like MGO. There you go, tabbed in. And then what you want to do. You really want to make sure that these are aligned. You really need to. And then, you take those weird bit, bits I showed you on... Oh, goodness. This happens with my copy of Bumblebee a lot. So I just want to make sure that doesn't happen. I'm going to take that weird joint bit and just have it like so. And then, you take his waist here and unclip it from the torso. 
and you just fold it up. Now you see this little hole here? Uh, this peg right here on the leg, right there, will go into that hole. You don't want to focus on anything else right now except for getting that peg into that hole. So you just really, really focus on that. And if you just focus on it, you will get it. And just still have to make sure that the feet and the bit there are still aligned. Second verse, same as the first. Just focus on nothing except getting that together. Oh boy. And once you got it together, you got it together. And now, the final step. You can see that these bits are yet to be plugged in. You plug in the leg to the arm, and the um, bit on the arm will most likely plug into the leg when you do that. So just make sure those bits are plugged in. And, ladies and gentlemen, here is Bumblebee in vehicle mode. It took me years to do it properly, but I did it properly. Well, not years, I guess a year. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to jump cut now. Hopefully I don't waste as much as a lot. Uh, <laughs> hopefully I don't waste a lot of battery life just trying to transform Cliff Jumper. So I'll be right back with both of them transformed and the camera realigned. Now here's both of them transformed into their vehicle modes. And to be honest, I absolutely love these vehicle modes. They really evoke the kind of Cybertronian look that the game was trying to get. Now you can tell that this is not your Camaro Bumblebee. This is more of your Slugbug Bumblebee. Now, as you can see, the uh, colors from the vehicle... Uh, excuse me. Um, the colors from the robot mode really do translate well into the vehicle mode. You can see that the weapon storage still works there. And... All over, you can see how the kibble just kind of folds in together. Absolutely fantastic. Really just love the look of this. It's a really sturdy mode, too. It's not going to break apart. Uh, if you transform it um, wrong, and the two joints that I always missed, or the two pegs I always missed, or the peg um, where the forearm goes into the shoulder, and where the leg goes into the bi um, bit of back kibble, that little hole there. Now, overall, I just absolutely love Bumblebee's look. And having Cliff Jumper together, these two just absolutely they kind of remind me of a toy I got um like toys I'd get at McDonald's that I absolutely loved that I would never put down. They just kinda of have that unique look to them that are just that's so great. I just love the unique look to them. Just having both Cliff Jumper and Bumblebee just really, really just make this set worth buying. Now, like I typically do in my reviews, I want to talk about the price and kind of the rarity of these. Uh, a lot of the Warford Cybertron figures are not easy to get. Just showing you right here, Megatron, um, I got for 10 bucks um, because I just lucked out, but he goes for like 40, upwards of 40 bucks on eBay, so yeah, these figures are really hard to get. Um, I think Bumblebee and Cliff Jumper, I'd say probably go for around 25 30 now. I got mine as a set for 25 or 30 I think, as a set. Now, individually, they'll probably cost you a lot more, but I would probably try to get these two together. Um, only if you just want Bumblebee or something. If you just want Bumblebee, get Bumblebee. But I highly suggest you get both of these. They're just really great repaints of each other. Really, really love them. They roll like a dream. Just absolutely fantastic toys. Some of the best Transformers ever to be released when it comes to del comes to the deluxe scale. I absolutely love these things. They're really, really great toys. Now, there really isn't anything much else to say about them. Uh, except that you should get them, and unfortunately they're kind of hard to get. Now, I really guess that's it with this review, guys. Make sure to comment, like, subscribe. Check out my Facebook page if you have a chance. Have a good day, guys. And as always, roll out.